right, my dears, here's a recap of what we did today in class talking about electric field. So what is electric field? It is something that permeates space around a charged object or a charge carrier like a proton or, or electron. In other words, that is a way for a charge to let the world around it that it exists. Because otherwise, how do charges know about each other's presence? Electric force is one that exists across the distance. Two objects do not have to be in physical contact with each other to exert electric force onto each other. Somehow they communicate, and they communicate through an electric field. You watched the video where they showed you how those grass seeds were floating in oil under the influence of electric field that was created between the two either prongs or two plates and in that video you didn't see any direction so how do we know the direction of electric field we just decided we as humanity decided let's think positive let's think what would a charge do to a baby positive charge in the proximity and as you can see here if i imagine a baby charge anywhere in the proximity of this charge that's at the center which is the source of the electric field if i put a baby charge that is positive next to that charge it will be repelled no matter where i put that baby charge here there anywhere it will always be repelled hence the direction of the electric field lines basically the electric field lines represent the direction of a force on a positive charge as opposite to that these are the directional forces that would be exerted on a positive charge neg next to a negative charge they would be attracted baby charge right here would be attracted and you see how the density, in other words, number of lines per unit area increases. The closer we get to the charge, now I'm getting away from the charge, so the density of lines is decreasing. It's like getting closer to the sun is hotter, or getting closer to a piece of ice is colder. So the closer to the charge you get, the stronger the field, and the stronger the force that would be exerted on the charge. Ultimately, how do you figure out how strong the field is? I'm going to take you back a little bit to force of gravity to make that analogy so you understand how to deal with electric field. Let's say we are on Earth and we have two objects that are 10 meters above the ground. One object is 1 kilogram and the other one is 10. So since they're not too far above the Earth, I can say that G right here is 9.8. And here G is also 9.8 and then gravity on the one kilogram object is just going to be mg so it's going to be 9.8 newtons the gravity on the 10 kilogram object is going to be 98 newtons makes sense 10 times more massive 10 times more gravitational pull however if I take the ratio force of gravity to mass then what I see is force of gravity 9.8 per 1 equals the force of gravity of 98 per 10. This ratio is G. You're probably thinking, duh, we just multiplied by G, now we're dividing back, and of course we're going to get G. The point I'm trying to make is that G is not only acceleration due to gravity, it is the measurement for the field. How strong is the gravitational field near the surface of the Earth? It would be totally different on the Moon or on Saturn or, or on Jupiter, anywhere on any other planet, unless it's very like Earth, G will be different. Gravity, the strength of gravitational field somewhere out there in space is different from what we have here on the surface of Earth. And G measures the strength. Now for electric field, the ratio is force electric per charge. Again, we had G for gravity. Since it was force of gravity, gravity, we don't quite understand it, but we know it's caused by mass. It's force of gravity per mass. Here, this is electric force. Understand it a little bit better than gravity. And it's electric force divided by the charge. So it's charge versus mass. So E is going to be a vector. I don't have any vector signs here, but they are implied. And how do you decide the direction of the field? The direction of the electric field I already mentioned is the direction of the force on the positive charge. So you imagine a baby positive charge. Now going back to the electric field lines, what if your charge is not flying solo? What if there is a charge next to it? So then we're going to draw these lines a little bit differently. Again, you saw that in the movie, in the little video. 
They didn't show you this contraption in the video because they had those two electrodes connected to an outlet and therefore it had a positive and a negative sign. But this would be like a dead zone between two positive charges that are equal and you know that they're equal because the number of lines around them is equal. And then this diagram, remember, we described and you pinpointed right away that the negative charge is stronger than the positive charge because we had more lines. How would you figure out the ratio? You count the number of lines around the positive, it's one, two, three, four. And when you counted all the lines around the negative, there were 16. So therefore, if I set the Q positive to Q negative, it's like four to 16. So Q for neg of negative to Q positive would be, if I said this is your Q1 and this is your Q2, then I could also say Q1 to Q2, something that you're going to see in homework, 16 to 4. So the ratio is 4. The negative charge is four times as strong as the positive charge. Again, rules on those lines. They're never going to cross. They will start on the positive and end on the negative, and they will be, the number of them will be proportional. And also, uh, electric field constant would concentrate, oh my goodness, grammar mistake, concentrates at sharp points of an object. So here's an example. You have the concentration of charges at the pinpoint of this funny shaped object. In your homework, you have a question about why are you more likely to be shocked when you touch metal with your finger versus your hand. Here's your explanation. Your hand would be a wider area, whereas your finger is a pointy area. And pointy area, if you are charged through static electricity, your tips of your fingers carry most of the charge. And that's how you're going to get zapped because there's electric field that is very, very strong in the tip of your fingers. So I hope this makes a little more sense now what this E stands for. It's how strong the electric field is. And let's drive it a little bit deeper in. So let's say I have a one Coulomb charge, which is huge, remember? because it's lots and lots of electrons and it's positive. So it's missing lots and lots of electrons. And, and then I'm going to imagine a teeny tiny baby charge of one nanocoulomb to make our life easier. It is going to be one meter away. Then what is the force between these two charges? The source of my field is this huge one coulomb charge. It's the source. Therefore, I'm going to show the direction of its field going out. And if I take and figure out the force electric between these two charges is going to be 899 10 to the 9 times 1 squared times 10 to the negative 9, which neatly takes care of this silly part. And it's divided by 1 squared. Told you I was going to make it easy on you. The answer is 8.99 newtons. Bam. Now, what if I take the same source of 1 coulomb, but instead of 1 nanocoulomb, I put a thousand times stronger charge. And instead of nanocoulomb, Let's put it over here. I will take a one microcoulomb. Again, exactly, doesn't look like exactly, but I mean it to be exactly one meter away. So the same distance from the same charge. Force electric now, though, will be 899 10 to the 9th, 1 squared times 10 to the negative 6th over 1 squared for the distance. That is going to be, my dears, 8.99 10 to the 3rd third newtons. That is a thousand times stronger force on a thousand times stronger charge. The direction is this way. So then look, 8.99, which was the force for my one nanocoulomb. And I divided by one times 10 to the negative ninth. Then I will get 8.99 10 to the ninth. And that will be Newtons per coulomb. On the other hand, if I take 8.99 10 to the third, remember that was my field on this puppy, and I divided by 1 times 10 to the negative sixth. <gasps> what do you know? 8.99 10 to the ninth Newtons per coulombs. That tells you one meter away from my charge of one coulomb, here's my sunshine. And here are my lines, electric field lines that go out. If I look in the radius of one meter around it, no matter where, if this is one coulomb and this is one meter distance from it, anywhere around that, I will have the electric field pointing out with the strength of 8.99 10 to the ninth 
newtons per coulomb and then i can figure out the force on any charge that are placed in that area because i know the strength of that field so that's the point of the strength of the field we are not concerned with what is in that field we're just concerned with how strong that field is due to the source which is the charge and to the distance so what we did in class remember we said and wrote down force electric equals kc big q which is the source baby q which is the little charge inside that field over distance squared and now we're going to incorporate and instead of this force electric i'm going to take and plug in this whole contraption which is coulomb's law if i take force electric and divide by the baby q which is not the source but the victim if you will of the electric field that it's in for this picture this is the source and this is the baby charge one meter away from it kc big mama q which created the field and the little baby q that's in that field r squared that is my force electric this is what i wrote and then i will have to divide that by baby q well then baby q cancels and the strength of electric field at a certain point away from the charge is just going to be kc q over r squared that's the formula we're going to use that formula in all our calculations so if it's in the middle smack in the middle you imagine the baby positive charge if you have to or you just remember that the electric field is directed towards a negative charge and away from the positive charge so if this is my source and it's pointing that away if that is my source it's pointing that away and it's slightly smaller because the charge is small then if i say that this is the electric field caused by eight nanocoulombs and that is the electric field caused by five nanocoulombs then i'm just going to subtract the field of the five from the field of the eight and my net field net electric field would be just whatever that is this would be my e net it will be pointing to the left you can imagine a smack positive charge if you want or you can just remember that the electric field is going to be directed towards the negative charge very much towards the 15 because it's strong and about one third of that to negative five because it's one third smaller and it's smack in the middle and again you will take your e of 15 and subtract your e of five to figure out what the net electric field is smack in the middle between opposite charges away from five that is positive and towards the five that is negative this is e from negative five and this is e from positive five so you will add them because they're in the same direction and for each one of those remember it's smack in the middle so you will divide the 20 by 2 divide the 40 by 2 and divide the 6 by 2 and remember that you will have to convert centimeters to meters otherwise you're not going to end up with newtons so i have two equal charges the point is when we are figuring out the electric field in the right angle and you will only encounter those problems i'm not going to torture you through electric field on any of the other points so you have seven positive electric field is going away from the positive to me it looks like that distance is a little longer and the field from the negative is towards it so something like that remember so now i have those two vectors and i will make a parallelogram which in this case is a rectangle and this is what i am looking for this is my net field and you will do Pythagorean theorem so first you're gonna do for this one you would do KC 7 10 to the negative 9 over whatever that R1 is I'm gonna call this R1 and I asked you to make up whatever you wanted and this would be my R2 so then this vector will be again KC 7 10 to the negative 9 remember it doesn't matter plus or minus that will determine which way your field will be pointing but the value doesn't have to be affected by it and this will be over r2 and obviously both of those will be squared sorry i missed that and then you do pythagorean theorem and inverse tangent that is how you would solve that problem i'll record videos for the homework a little later but this is just a recap of what we did today in class thank you for watching